this is kind of an impromptu video so i don't have my all my gear in the right place i just want to talk briefly about a video that has been stirring up a lot of commotion okay, but i do understand that there's a lot of christians that are out there that don't understand about testimonies and what people go through and why it's important for a christian who is uh, running a bible channel teaching the word of god how it's important for them to give testimony to some of the things that they've been through in life because that's how you connect with people that is part of ministry <clears throat> excuse me i have a cold that's part of ministry so for me i recently traveled and i experienced a situation which was very similar to another situation that i had and i spoke about that in the video and i said in the video that i wasn't bashing the person so this the video is 26 minutes long and maybe this person was mentioned six minutes in the video and this person decides to make drama out of it. And this is not the first time. And I'm sorry to say, but there's a pattern here. When you continue to publish things publicly, you know, I talked about something that happened to me that I never mentioned in my breakup. I discovered a piece of paper. It was a 2017 separation agreement between him and his ex-wife. I said to him, you know, do you have divorce papers? I saw this and he didn't answer me. And then I asked him for the divorce papers and he laughed in my face. And that's what he does. He jokingly does that around. He's, he's done that in the past. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, no big deal because he'll probably get it later or whatever. So the day goes on and days go on. And then I ask him again for it. And he still he says, oh, it's in the can, it's in the van. And I got to get it. I got to find it. I got all these papers. So he's only here for four months out of the whole year. So you kind of, things just happen and they just kind of got let go. But those things are still in your heart. Um, they're still in your mind. Okay. For a woman, those things are important. Because I don't know about you, but if you're my boyfriend and you're asking me for proof, I'll just hand it to you. And I'll show you the stamp from the court is a raised stamp from the court. Usually it's like a notary stamp and it's raised with edges. I asked him for this and he doesn't show it to me. Now on his video, he claims that he showed me the paper, which he did not show me the paper. Because our problems came as a result of this just not showing me the paper. And not only that, I don't understand what the problem is, why he's saying that he had to show me the paper twice. I am not an incompetent woman. I understand. I actually defended myself in my own divorce at the ending. So I understand law and I understand a lot of things because I've done a lot of things in my life. So if you show me a paper, I get it the first time. So that makes no sense why he says, that he showed me the paper twice okay so he did not show me the paper and i've been living with this for years with for years so this is what caused a lot of our problems in the relationship because we had discussions after this because the paper thing kept coming back to me the divorce paper and i would ask him he didn't have it he didn't this always there was always something going on I never physically saw the paper. There's a pattern with this person um, who continues to take women from his past and try to manipulate the situation to make them look like they're mentally ill. Now his wife, I'm sorry to say she was mentally ill. She, and it's a pattern because he needs to shame her. I, I was married for 10 years and I had problems with my ex-husband and there are, some of them were a result of Christian and some stuff that he did to Christian. You never see me here talking about my ex-husband. I don't need to shame anybody on anything. And I will remind you that those are his children that are watching these videos of him talking about her. She had to take care of these children while he went to work. So at least give her some respect for that. He wants to blame her. And I've said this to him when we were together. I said, when he would say, no, because we lost the house because of my ex-wife, I'd say, you got to take responsibility for that because you knew she had a mental illness. She was busy taking care of the kids and you were still responsible for managing the things 
that were given to you, right? So if you know that this person is not good with money, well, then you should be checking. You should be making the payments. You should make sure that all of these things are getting paid. So the, what I'm trying to tell you, there's a pattern here to push the problem on other people. He chose to make this public. And by his own admission, he said that he used YouTube as a way to break up. Now, that to me is not normal when a person does something like that. I don't understand why he made my life public. I don't want my my my, my life public. I was just going to post my videos normally. And all the parts about us breaking up, I was just going to cut them out because nobody needs to know anything. And then tell people that, you know, we broke up. And nobody had to know the details about anything. So he's the one that started with the views. He's the one that started with the drama. And I had to defend myself because a lot of the things he was saying were just not true. And I posted all of those videos to show that they were not true. And unfortunately, I have to go back to this situation again because he's over there saying things that are untrue. And the, the reason is that I'm doing this is because that causes defamation of my character. It's important that people believe my testimony. And that is my testimony. I've lived with this for several years. He goes back and now he's parking at his ex's house. And I'm telling him, you know what? I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not comfortable with you sleeping over there. And there were things that were happening that add up to those reasons why, you know, like when you're sitting there looking at pictures, um, I know in his, in one of his videos, he had talked about how he transferred all his old videos, VHS videos to a drive and they were sent here and then he put it on his iPad and he had it on his iPad, which is fine, great family. But some of those pictures um, had his ex-wife, at least one of them that I saw was one that I really looked at and I said, oh my gosh, you know, like she was like told, she had like, I mean, I guess she had been breastfeeding or maybe sleeping or something or taking naps. But you could see her boobs, I mean, clear as day through the shirt. And he's sitting next to her. So those are the kind of things that, for me, I think are disrespectful for you to be sitting there looking at those. I understand that you wanted these pictures for your family, for your kids. But you sitting there ruminating on this, and it's your pattern, as you've proven, that you talk about this woman... And you talk about keeping going back with her all the time. So this is not, this is a pattern that I'm seeing. So when he goes back, he's now, he's sleeping at her house. He's sleeping, well, not at the house, but he's sleeping out, he says in the driveway. Well, I believe him that it's that. But I still say to him, look, I find it disrespectful. I find that I'd rather that you go to the Walmart. How bad is that? You're only there like maybe once every other week. And so... We had talked about that and we got into an argument about it. And we ended up breaking up because I hung up on him and he never called me back. And that was the way that it was. It just ended like that. And then two months later, he calls me and he leaves me a message. And I call him back. I don't keep old voicemails. I don't need to. If you want to believe me, that's fine. I really don't care. But this is the pattern that I want to show you with this person. So... And I'll show you that coming up so you can see that even after this breakup, he's still looking for me. One of the reasons I left was because the day before we were at, he took me to his house. I mean, I'm coming 1200 miles. We don't have a lot of time together. He takes me to his old house that was foreclosed on. And instead of wanting to spend time with me, he's spending time filming this house. Like you live up here. Why don't you do this when I'm not here? That was what I was talking about in the video that particular day. I don't want to be the third wheel. I don't want to be the third wheel. Even if you're not physically, but you're still in a place where you're wishing to be back there. I don't want to be in a relationship with a person like that. I want to know that you are ready to move on. And obviously I didn't feel he was ready to move on. And that's why I left. I left because the next day... He wasn't treating me well. And I showed it in the video. It's really hard for me to follow him because he is going so fast and he's already in this mood. Like it's almost like he doesn't want to be with me. So it's making me hard to catch up to him. And I showed all of that in my video. He doesn't tell me about 
the next exit. I couldn't see him at all. And in my video, you see, you can't even see him. That's how fast he was going. So if he doesn't feel that that was the case, I'm sorry, but you kind of left me hanging. You left me hanging. And the way that I felt, I felt like I was being pushed aside and I was not going to receive that anymore. And the fact that I didn't have a document showing still to that day that he was actually divorced is part of the problem here. All of these things added up to that moment in my head when I said, what are you doing? Just go. And I just, I had enough of him that day. I just had enough. You know, when you get to the point when you just have to go because nothing makes sense with dealing with a person. I left him. I went to Allentown, PA, and I went to Applied Fitness there and I took a shower. And, you know, then from there, I went to Walmart and I was grieved in my spirit. I was saddened. I was hurt. And yes, I felt betrayed. I felt betrayed by him. I knew in my heart that we had to end it. And I really wanted to end it in a good way as friends. So I was willing to go drive back two hours to go talk to him and give him back the phone at that time. Okay, the radios, yes, the radios are his. He bought them. Um, but he gave them to me when I, when he, and he's, and he admitted it, he gave them to me. So I don't know why that even comes up. I don't know if he's trying to make it seem like he does a lot for me, but I'm going to tell you something. I think as a woman, it's disrespectful that you come here to talk about radios and cell phones and gifts. You, I never talked about the gifts. I never talked about the things or the food that I cooked for you about the time or the laundry that you do here. I don't talk about that. This is not some shack you know if i if this was a bed and breakfast how much would people be paying me to stay here so really understand that those things kind of show that what this person is trying to be a little bit manipulative and that's what i've talked in the past and i've seen that in him where he's trying to be manipulative because he's using little things that don't really mean a lot yes i appreciate what you've done you've worked here you've done stuff for me but i've also helped him with many things and i've also helped his kids and i've also cleaned up after his kids and i've also cooked for them and i've done a lot of things to make sure that he had quality time spending in here with his kids the situation with christian yes every family has problems he has problems too and he had problems with his I don't think that was necessary to be said in the video. I don't think you need to talk about the papers. Obviously, there's videos showing that that all was all done. And I think it's disrespectful that you're going back and going there because you keep hammering on the same thing. Let's get to the facts. And the facts are that there was a document that I asked for on my third year with you because I saw a separation agreement of 2017 and that's the year that we were dating and you wouldn't show me the divorce papers. Now, if you had them, that was cruel of you to hold on to them. Now, if you didn't have them and went back north and now you have them, well, then you should have said that to me. My testimony of what happened to me recently was because of what happened to me with him while I was on the road, how I was betrayed and how I was treated and how I had to leave the situation to come back home. That's what it was about. I didn't say names. I didn't point to a video. I didn't point to my video. As a matter of fact, I don't even get monetized over there. And that's why I posted that video over there because it's a testimony for the glory of God. It's a testimony for the glory of God and where I am today and where I can stand here and talk about that situation and what I came out of it and the reflection that it's had on my life and how God has been able to use me in ministry and use me to talk about these things. And guess what? It's not going to go away because that was a part of my life. That's what a testimony is. It's not there to bash you. It's to talk about what happened to me how god pulled me out of that do you understand really wish the best i really hope that this ends i really hope that you understand i'm not here to bash you i didn't say your name what i wanted to do was just talk about a situation that happened to me and that's what i do in order to give god the glory of how he brought me out of such a difficult situation because i felt my life was breaking apart when i was on the road i've never experienced grief being on the road and that's what i was sharing 
And I also experienced it recently with some of these women. And that is a different topic that I'm not going to get into. So I just want to show you in this um, text message that I still have. You can see that's still on my computer with all the text messages around it from that time. Um, obviously, the one that says meet me here, that was the one at 1013. That was the one for the Anytime Fitness where I left him. So it's showing that I'm going the wrong way. The same as my video showed. When I talked about it, he left a message also saying that I was going the wrong way and I left. Um, the one for 1015, that was the one that I sent him after two days at the Walmart telling him that I was willing to come back um, to talk to him. Eventually, that's what I was going to do. I was going to give him the phone that day. I was going to give it back to him. But he never responded to me. As you can see, he never responded to me. So I left. Um, on the one on the 1018, on that one, that was the night that he posted his breakup video, supposedly. And I replied to him about him putting my information public and for all the things um, that he had put me through. And then finally, the one on the bottom, um, this one is also... He's in my contacts, but by this time, this is the next year, um, and he contacts me with an excuse about something about Christian um, that he really didn't need to because I was in courtside on this day. This was on 2-7. I was in courtside with the girls, and that's why it shows up at the bottom. This is a pattern with you that you break up for months, and then you just want to come back into my life and see in this text message. You know, we had already been broken up for quite a time. His daughter was over 18. And he could have put her as the emergency contact. Instead, they call me. You know, he knows that um, he should have done that. So either he's not responsible. He doesn't take responsibility. That's why he lost the house. That's why his marriage fell apart. But you know what? God reveals things to me, you know, and that's what my whole mission is over there to tell people you need to listen to God. When God is telling you something about a person, that person is not right for you. I'm sorry that I had to do this video you know, I, I don't want to hurt you, but obviously something had to be cleared up about this because this back and forth is really not good. It's really not good. And that this is too expensive. You see that, you see that one? Do you know something different? Did you put the new phone? <laughs> yeah. What is this one? It's a new phone. No, Louis, yeah. I can't accept this. No, you can. No. Read the card. Did you read the card? Did you read the card? No, Louis. Let it. Let I can't it, take it. This. this is too much let money. It, no. Let it, let it. For those of you that have made it to the end of the video, I do want to make this video positive towards the end. So for those of you that noticed, the other night I posted this video because I got caught up in the emotion of what I saw that was happening, which was not my intent. Because my original testimony video only had 58 views. And that's typical of what I get over there in a Bible study channel. I get maybe... 60 70 maybe 100 views and that's basically it there's no drama over there or anything like that so i got caught up in all of this stuff of what was happening because i was being accused like i was doing something on purpose and that was not my intent at all so i got caught up in the emotion and i posted that video and uh what i did was i took it down and i re-edited it that's what you saw today just there was it's basically it's all the same stuff except i've just kept going over some some topics in there but I did re-edit it to shorten it because I wanted to add the reflection that I had my reflection was more towards um his from his wife than anything else because I realized that I was also the sinner who got caught up in the popular opinion of his perspective of who she is and I don't know this woman and I don't want to judge her, but I was one of the ones that took his side, that believed that she was not a nice person. And I know that hundreds of people have been thinking that over the years and I felt remorse because this situation showed me that I have a platform. I can come here and talk and say and produce evidence. She didn't have that opportunity so what she must have been going through, especially if she is mentally handicapped in some way or whatever, he says that that was really something that is, was probably haunting her. Having all of these people, you know, bashing her or thinking things about her with her not being able to have a voice. To me, that's, that was something that I had to apologize. So to Karen, I do apologize for, for that 
for being one of the ones that got caught up in the story. And I'm, I apologize to you for that. That's something that I shouldn't have done. And I do uh, rectify that with an apology to let you know that um, that was who I was. I also want to talk as well about forgiveness and how forgiveness is very different for different people. Um, for me, it took a while to give forgiveness. But the, 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 the reason I was having problems giving forgiveness was because I had to accept to forgive myself. And the reason I had to forgive myself was because I allowed somebody to continuously go over the boundaries that I set. I'm going to take responsibility because I should have stopped at the place of this is what I saw. So explain this document, the separation agreement, and then now I need to see the proof of what you're saying. To me, it was about um, setting boundaries about the two piece of, pieces of paper and I didn't do a good job with that. So during time of reflection, I learned that so that I don't make these mistakes again in, the, again in the future. So when I was able to forgive myself, I'm also able to forgive him. So I do forgive him for all of this. I don't hold a grudge over him. I think we're both sinners. We both did wrong things. And I hope that if you watch these videos, you will learn from our mistakes so that it doesn't happen to you. So as far as this video is concerned, I will be um, leaving it without comments because um, what comments does is it just attacks people and I don't need people attacking him because he's not a bad person. I know he has a good heart. Um, he just did some wrong things and I'm sure he's also had some reflection on those as I have. So I don't need people bashing him. I don't need people bashing me. Um, and I also invite all of you who got caught up in all this drama about Karen to also bring it to the Lord tonight in prayer and repent of that sin of the judgment that you had towards a person that you didn't know and you didn't hear her voice and her side of the story. So because of this time of reflection, I've also decided to do my first sermon this week even though i do bible studies on the other channel i really decided that i was going to do my first sermon this week because that's where god is taking me gradually so this week i'm going to do a sermon in my bible study probably thursday or friday so if you want to head over there it's going to be on casting stones so two important verses are going to be on there the typical one that you know of jesus and then there's another proverbs one that i'm really excited to put those two together into my teaching for this week but this is something that i've learned this week as well that god's brought me through so i hope that all of this is going to also teach you something as well that's going to be fruitful in your life and you'll be able to bear good fruit from it and pass it around to other people when you see those things happening so i thank you so much for watching i hope you all have a wonderful day remember i'm leaving the comments out because there's no room for hate anymore Bye bye